Apologies in advance because I'm about to butcher a man's name right here. But Anthony Yard defeats Nikola Siaglocka in the fourth round with a TKO. Siaglocka is, I believe, a career super middleweight. This was only his second fight at light heavyweight as far as I'm aware. But he has fought at a pretty high level at super middleweight. He's a very experienced campaigner who'd never been stopped before. So, as I say, despite the fact he's a career super middleweight, on paper, this is a pretty good result for Anthony Yard, in my view. Stopping a guy who's never been stopped. A guy who's been in with Callum Smith, for example. So he did well to stop him. He dropped him twice. With that being said, I think that Sia Glocker's experience did show in this fight because he was the first Anthony Yard opponent who actually managed to land some meaningful punches and apply some pressure to Anthony Yard. From a physical point of view, Yard responded very well. His offense was just as impressive as ever. And he was able to put shots together, body shots, use his movement, um, touching Sia Glocker upstairs and downstairs with punches, you know, lead left hooks, straight right hands, uppercuts, a real good variety of punches from Anthony Yard and a very impressive offensive display. But defensively, Sia Glocker did expose some holes in Anthony Yard there. He did. And for my money, when Yard got caught the first few times by clean punches, his whole demeanor changed and the look on his face changed. Anthony Yard is a very happy-go-lucky character. But when he got hit in this fight, all of a sudden, the smile disappeared from his face and he realized he was actually in a fight. <laughs> and he was going to have to respond in kind and he did respond in kind but I do feel there was kind of almost an element of slight surprise in Anthony Yard and maybe even slight shock and even in the post-fight uh, you know, I don't want to say the post-fight interview but the post-fight um, immediately after the fight when Yard was still in the ring and he was walking around even then he didn't quite look as comfortable as normal he was smiling and whatnot eventually, but I can see things in people. I can read people's body language very, very well. That's one thing I'm good at in life, right? And to me, he looked uncomfortable. He looked like I didn't expect this guy to come in here and punch me in the mouth as many times as he did. So uh, it's good for Anthony Yard to go through something like that, but he's going to need more of it. Again, he's a happy-go-lucky guy, and being a happy fighter is important, but you also need these grounding experiences which show you that this is not a game and every time you get in the ring it's not going to be all smiles you're going to have guys who get in there and do punch you in the mouth uh, Anthony Yard takes a lot of his style from Floyd Mayweather now Floyd Mayweather wasn't the first guy to use that kind of style the Philly show and whatever no James Tony and many other fighters over the decades have used the Philly show defense and a similar style to the style that Mayweather ended up using. But for this generation, it appears that people like Yard have patterned this style more on Mayweather. I've, I don't have an issue with it. Whatever style works for you is cool. Um, but Yard is going to have to work on that Philly show defense more. Because if a guy like Sia Glocker is able to catch him as frequently as he did, you know, when he moves up into the world level at light heavyweight, there are going to be much bigger, stronger guys who will also be able to catch him in similar fashion and he won't be able to shake off their punches the way he was able to shake off Sia Glocker's punches, a guy who, as I say, is a career super middleweight. So there's definitely defensive work for Yard to work on there and maybe it's not just his technique, maybe it's his mindset. You know, you have to go into these fights confident, yes, happy, yes, but realizing that this could be very tough, realizing that you could get punched in the mouth, you could get hurt, you could be put in difficult situations and being prepared for it mentally. That's the key. Yard maybe looks at guys like Mayweather, smiling, being happy, controlling fights. But look at Mayweather's rise to the top. Do you remember his fight against Demarcus Cawley? He got hurt in that fight. <laughs> he got punched in the mouth and hurt. You know, Mayweather had tough experiences on the way up before he became the guy, you know, that we know today, the money man, pretty boy. Before he became that guy, he was getting punched in the mouth. <laughs> he, 
He was getting bloody noses and bust lips and getting rocked at certain times. That happened to him. Yard also has to go through tough experiences. He also has to go through a baptism of fire, particularly given the fact that he doesn't have many amateur fights under his belt. So he's going to need them formative experiences. Uh, obviously, you don't want to throw him in there with someone who's blatantly going to stand a very good chance of beating him at this stage. If you're building, building him as a prospect and you're managing him like Frank Warren or whatever, then yeah, you don't want to throw him in there with someone where it's going to be a 50-50. Uh, but because you want to get, give him enough experience first before you do that. But you do want to throw him in there with someone who's going to test him. So if they can get someone similar to a Sia Glocker, but a career light heavyweight rather than a career super middleweight, that'll probably be the next best step. He needs rounds. He's clearly a formidable offensive force. But defensively, again, he needs work. And mentally, he needs to go through certain experiences, in my view. That will strengthen him and stand him in much better stead when he steps up to world level at light heavyweight. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. Again, the actual fight itself, he dropped Sia Glocker twice, I believe in the second round and the fourth round, picked his punches very well, you know, did good things, but I did notice he was kind of surprised <laughs> when he got hit a few times and it changed his demeanor and he wasn't so quite so happy-go-lucky. Uh, I think it did shock him a little bit, but physically he responded in the right way, so... You know, this will probably stand him in good stead. And he, uh, he would have learned more from the Sia Glocker fight and it would have done him more good. That one four-round fight would have done him more good than all the other fights he's had in his career previous to now, combined. <laughs> That's how poor the level of opposition has been for Anthony Yard prior to this Sia Glocker fight. Very poor. He would have learned nothing from the previous fights. This Sia Glocker fight is the first fight he's actually learned something from. So more like this and... A bit tougher than Sia Glocker, please. Okay. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you felt about Andy Yard's performance. Who would you like to see him fight next? Etc. All right. It's Hatman and Mount.